Hi, this lesson is part two of the lesson on derivatives and rates of change. Okay, but before we continue talking about derivatives and rates of change, let's remind ourselves about something that we call functional notation. This is functional notation. It is read as f of x. y is equal to f of x, meaning y is a function of x. So again, y being the dependent variable and x being the independent variable. With functional notation, um, pretty much is telling you that whatever is in this x position uh, for f of x will replace the x's in your function. So for this function, this quadratic um, uh, polynomial, anything that x is will replace the x's in the 2x squared minus 5x. So for example, if I wanted to evaluate 5a, 5a just means that a replaces all of the x's in 2x squared minus 5x, so I get 2a squared minus 5x. These are not like terms, so there's really nothing else you can do with that expression. Um, similarly, if I want to evaluate f of a plus h, a plus h now replaces the x's, so I will get 2 times a plus h squared minus 5 times a plus h, um, but we can actually do more with this expression because we can expand the a plus h, distribute the 2, and then distribute the negative 5. So when I FOIL, because I'm squaring this, when I FOIL a plus h and distribute 2, I'll get this expression, and when I distribute the negative 5, I will get this expression. Um, so our final answer is everything you see here on the right, because none of these are like terms, so there's nothing you can combine, so you are done. All right, but that leads us to something called the difference quotient, which uses a similar, uh, which uses functional notation. You can think of a difference quotient as a slope calculation, just like we did the slope of a secant line um, in part one. So suppose instead of calling my point x sub 1, y sub 1, if I call the first point a, f of a, because a is the independent variable and f of a is the dependent variable, and suppose I call my second point uh, a plus h, f of a plus h. So if I do my slope calculation, um, change in y over change in x using the a and a plus h um, the P and the Q that I defined here, change in Y will be F of A plus H minus F of A, and change in X will be A plus H minus A. But notice that in the denominator, the A's cancel. So this expression here, F of A plus H minus F of A, is what we call the difference quotient. Okay, so... And just like we discussed in part one, that means we can call that difference quotient also an average rate of change over these two points. Uh, but remember, when you're talking about an instantaneous rate of change or the slope of a tangent line, um, you're, you're not considering two points. There's really just one point that you're taking into consideration. So if you think of, um, these two points, these two uh, points being really close to each other, then when the difference between the x values become very small, if we call that h, h approaches zero, then you really just have one point. So as h gets closer and closer to zero, your two points actually become a single point and thus uh, a secant line becomes a tangent line. Uh, so if we uh, consider this as our slope calculation, um, f of x sub 1 plus h minus f of x minus f of x sub 1 over x sub 1 plus h minus x sub 1, uh, think of x sub 1 as just any random value that the function exists on, um, just like we called it a, x sub 1 is just a different way to uh, call it. Um, if I'm looking at an average rate of change, I'm just doing a traditional slope calculation. 
But when I'm looking at an instantaneous rate of change, it means these points are getting very, very close together. Uh, H is approaching zero. And so the limit as H approaches zero of my difference quotient is actually how you're going to compute your instantaneous rate of change. And that's actually what we call the derivative. Right? We'll be talking about that uh, for the rest of this section as well as the section that follows, 2.7. All right, so here we want to find the slope of the tangent line to the given curve at the point P. So instead of using tables the way we did um, in, in the previous uh, part one of this lesson, we're actually going to use this uh, formula in order to compute the slope of the tangent line. So we're not going to be picking values of 2 that are close to 2, like 1.999 and 2.001. This is not calculator heavy. This is something that's going to be um, more algebraic in nature. So we're going to plug it into the formula that I, I circled here above. And so I need to compute f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 because my x value is 2. Um, all over h. And so now I go back to using my functional notation. My function is 1 minus 1 half x squared. So I get 1 minus 1 half 2 plus h squared minus, so that's uh, this part of the formulas, all of this, minus, and then I plug in 2 into my function. So it's 1 minus 1 half times 2 squared. Uh, then we want to expand that. So all I did from here to there is I foiled this. And here, this is 1 half times 4, so that's where we get just 1 minus 2. Um, then I distributed the negative 1 half across. So I get 1 minus 2 minus 2h minus 1 half h squared. Uh, this just becomes negative 1, so it's minus negative 1. Um, and so when you combine all of my constants here, this 1, this positive 1, and this minus 2 will all cancel out. So I'm left with negative 2h minus 1 half h squared over h. Um, and so if you divide them both by h, uh, you'll get negative 2 minus 1 half h. Okay, but now I need to take my limit because remember I'm looking at an instantaneous rate of change. So the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 2 minus 1 half h, well, here we can't apply direct substitution. That h goes to 0, so my answer is just negative 2. So the slope of the tangent line is negative 2. All right, so let's do a similar example. We want to find the slope of the tangent line to the given curve at the point P for the curve y equals 2x squared plus 5x at the point negative 2, negative 2. So again, we're going to use our um, formula for the difference quotient, um, and I'm taking my limit as h approaches 0. So I'm going to put that notation in right from the beginning. Notation is really important. Um, in mathematics and the further you go um, up into more advanced math you, you need to be extra careful. Um, so here is our definition. It's the limit as h approaches 0 of f of, and this time my x is negative 2 plus h minus f of negative 2 all over h. Now remember this is f of x. So in the next line I replace the negative 2 plus h and the negative 2 into my function. So when I replace negative 2 plus h, I get this piece right here. And when I replace the negative 2, I get this part right here. And don't forget you're subtracting the two expressions, so there should be a minus in between. Um, and then the whole thing is over h. OK, so from this line to this line, I foiled this. Um, I distributed the 5, and I simplified here. This is, um, 
this is going to be 8 minus 10, which is what you see on the next line. Okay, then from line 3 to line 4, I distributed the 2, um, and I resolved this. This is minus negative 2, so it becomes plus 2 on the next line. All right, so now, and don't forget, all divided by h. Just keep writing that down for now. Notice that I keep writing my limit in front, in front of this, until I'm ready to plug in the h. Um, you need to keep writing that down. Um, and then uh, I can see that I have some like terms uh, on this line right here. Um, actually, on this line, I have some like terms. So I took care of my constants. So at least two of them here, 8 minus 10, that's negative 2. And everything else I just copied down. Um, then you can see that the uh, negative 2 and the positive 2 cancel out. I also have like terms with the h. So negative 8h and positive 5h gives us negative 3h on the next line plus the 2h squared over h. Um, so at this point, you need to simplify because the two terms on top have an h in it and there's an h in the denominator. So you can either divide them both by h or factor out an h, which is what I did on this line factored out an h. Um, that leaves me with h times negative 3 plus 2h all over h. h is cancel, and because that h and the denominator canceled, I can now apply direct substitution to this expression. And when you plug in the 0 here, you get a final answer, a slope to the tangent line that is equal to uh, negative 3. All right, so here we're being asked to find the average rate of change from P to Q and then the instantaneous rate of change at P. So when we're talking about an average rate of change, that's just a slope calculation, change in Y over change in X. Um, so let's do that first. So here are my two points, P and Q. Change in Y would be a negative one 0.42 minus negative uh, minus um, I have a typo here minus positive one. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. This is changing y. Negative 1.42 minus negative one, and then 1.1 minus one. Uh, so when you compute that, you'll get negative 0.42 over 0.1, which gives me a final answer of negative 4.2 as my average rate of change. So in other words, that would be the slope of the secant line through these two points, P and Q, that are on this uh, parabola. Um, the second asking us to find an instantaneous rate of change at P. So that means my X value is 1. Um, so I'm going to plug in the 1 at the end and just show you a different way to do this. Um, I'm going to just use my difference quotient in terms of x. So f of x plus h would be 1 minus 2 times x plus h squared minus 1 minus 2x squared all over h. So first the x plus h replaces the x here and then minus and then you just plug in your function 1 minus 2x squared um, all over h. And then just like the last couple of examples, I squared this first and I distributed the negative. So that's what you see on this line, 1 minus 2, and then in parentheses, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, um, and then minus 1 plus 2x squared. Next line, I distributed the negative 2. Um, and then once you do that distribution, you can see some things will cancel. So the 1's cancel, the 2x squareds cancel, and I'm left with negative 4xh minus 2h squared. But just like in the previous two examples, the h in the denominator will cancel with uh, an h in the numerator. So that leaves me with negative 4x minus 2h 
apply direct substitution, plug it in right there, and you get negative 4x as an answer, but that's not actually the answer to our problem. Negative 4x would be considered the general expression of the slope of the tangent line to a curve anywhere on the curve. But if I'm interested specifically in the point 1, negative 1, um, that means that if you plug in the 1 in here, you'll get the slope of a tangent line is negative 4. And remember, the secant line was negative 4.2. Um, and so it looks like the tangent line and the secant line are pretty close to each other because P and Q were close. Okay, so here's a, a slightly um, different um, application here, although very similar formulas. This is regarding displacement and velocity. Um, if we call S of T the displacement or position of an object, right? The, another word here is position of an object moving along a straight line, also called a rectilinear motion, um, from t equal to some time a, t would typically represent time, to another time a plus h, then we can compute the average velocity of that object to be the change in s, so think of it as delta s over delta t. Um, and this should look familiar to you. This is actually our difference quotient, just instead of using f as our my function value um, we're going to use s as our as our function um, but it's actually the same computation so similarly if we wanted to know the instantaneous velocity of an object or what's the velocity of an object at a single moment of time um, we're going to be using our um, difference quotient uh, with a limit taking your limit as h approaches zero and all that means is that uh, we're only considering a single moment of time, which we're going to call t sub 1. Okay, so um, because we're calling this a velocity function, um, you can say that the derivative, and this is notation for derivative, this little tick mark here, the derivative of your displacement function is equal to your velocity function. And similarly, if you take the derivative again, meaning the second derivative of your displacement function um, is the derivative of your velocity function, that will give you your acceleration, which is basically the change in V over the change in T. So it's again, it's your difference quotient formula uh, we're calling our function v instead of f or instead of s um, and taking the limit as h approaches zero, which means we are at a single moment of time. All right, so here we want to find the instantaneous velocity of an object moving with rectilinear motion according to the given function, then calculate the value for the value of t that's given. So we have that s of t is equal to 6 minus 3t, and we want to figure out what is the velocity at exactly 4 seconds. So our velocity function is going to be the derivative of my displacement, which is basically your difference quotient um, when t is equal to 4. So my function is this linear uh, 6 minus 3t. So uh, when I plug in the 4 plus h, I will have 6 minus 3 times 4 plus h minus, and then parentheses, 6 minus 3 times 4. Um, so that gives us, when you expand and distribute, um, you'll get 6 minus, um, this a little bigger, so you'll get 6 minus 12 minus 3h minus 6 plus 12. Uh, the 6s and the 12s all cancel out. So you're left with negative 3h over h. The h's cancel. So your velocity um, at four seconds is exactly uh, moving at negative three feet per second, um, negative three feet per second, because your, uh, your displacement function is in feet 
and your time is in seconds. So you want to make sure you show the appropriate units. Okay, so let's go on. We want to use the definition to find the instantaneous acceleration. When they say definition, that's that expression that I've been using um, in this part two, which is your difference quotient when you're taking the limit as h approaches zero. So we want to use the definition to find the instantaneous acceleration of an object moving with a rectilinear motion where your velocity is given to be 6t squared minus 4t plus 2, uh, and that's in meters per second when t is equal to 2. So I'm again going to do this one in general terms, and I'll plug in the 2 at the end. So you can see you have different options when you're doing these. Um, so I'm using the formula v of t plus h uh, minus v of t all over h. Um, and so my t plus h replaces all of my t's, which is what you see on this line. Uh, 6 times t plus h squared minus 4 times t plus h plus 2. And then the second part is just minus v of t. And so v of t is just 6t squared minus 4t plus 2. And we're going to have to distribute that minus in front of it. And the whole thing is over h. So just like in the last few examples, I had to square this or foil it out, which is what I get here. I also distributed... Um, the negative 4, which is what I got here. Um, and I distributed this negative, which is what I got here, All right? Um, then I distributed the 6. So this 6 goes across right here. And a few things um, I canceled. So I got rid of these 2s right away. Um, I wrote everything else down, although more cancels. You could cancel either in line 3 or in line 4. Um, and when I distribute the 6, you can see a lot of things are going to cancel on this line right here, uh, which is the 6t squared cancel, the 4t's will cancel, and I'm left with three terms in the numerator with h's in them, 12th plus 6h squared minus 4h all over h. Again, notice that my limit is in front of every single line until I actually apply direct substitution, so be sure to use good notation. Um, then I factored out the h, leaving me with 12t plus 6h minus 4 all over h. h is cancel. Um, you're left with this expression. At this point, you can apply direct substitution, so h replaces um, that value there. Uh, so you're left with a general expression for the acceleration of 12t minus 4. But remember, we wanted to know what is the acceleration when t is 2 seconds. So then we plug in 2 in here for the t, um, and I get... 24 minus 4, which means that my acceleration is 20 meters per second squared. So your acceleration units will always be your unit of measure uh, for time squared because it is the second um, derivative. Uh, so the, um, the velocity was meters per second, so your acceleration should be meters per second squared. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Give the homework a try. Good luck.